We're glad to be chatting with the very talented singer-songwriter, Mark Russell. How's it going? Oh, it's awesome. How's it going with you? Very good. Glad to be chatting with you. Tell us first off about your new EP coming out, One Take. Tell us about that. Uh, let me show you what it looks like. Bam! Ah, uh, very nice. This is the back. It comes out um, the 13th of this month, and you can get it on iTunes or uh, from my website. People have already been pre-ordering it, which is pretty awesome, too. Um, and then I think Amazon has it as well. Um, it's just like an amazing CD. Uh, I recorded most of it either um, in Orlando, uh, where I live now, or in, out in L.A. with uh, Justin Thorne at his studio. So... Um, I've been, it's like working with so many cool writers and just some of my own stuff that I just written, did myself and, uh, got to produce it myself and all that stuff. So it's like, it's so cool. It's, it's me, you know? Nice. Do you There's, have any favorite songs from the EP that we can look out for? Uh, I would have to say I like them all. Um, I mean, I wrote them. Of so. course. Where or at you... least I wrote them. Uh -huh. I at least like half of every song, right? Right, right. Um, Where do you get your inspiration no, when writing? Um, it really varies. Like, I mean, you know, like anything, some days you're more influenced by something than, you know, whatever else. And then at other times, it's like you just kind of get this concept for a song and you're like, well, maybe I can write a song about that and put myself in that position and see where it goes, you know? Right, right. And then we like dance. Uh, your three-part music video you have going. Tell us about yes. that. Dance is is, uh, is my latest single that I dropped um, on iTunes and everything. And we decided to do three music videos and go with different concepts for each one. So, um, you know, one is like kind of actual dancing and there's this ballet chick that's really amazing. And um, I actually have my younger brother in it dancing a little bit and like we just had different people dancing it was such a cool feel and it's the full band um is in that one as well and then you go and you have one where i'm just kind of walking around um la and uh santa monica area all that stuff and we we buddied up with uh this company called hoodie buddy and they have like these earphones and the the hoodies and all that stuff um so it was kind of like just walking around jamming to dance and just like bouncing to it and getting people to dance that I just kind of walk up to and, um, you know, and then we had the other one where I'm just like in the studio and it's more about writing and producing the song and kind of how it goes. Yeah, I saw the second one just recently and I absolutely love it. Just to be in the streets of Hollywood, it's amazing. I noticed Sunset Boulevard and the Walk of Fame. Oh, it's really yeah. nice. Yeah, we tried to hit a lot of cool, um, you know, popular kind of like popular or touristy spots. Uh, and it's so cool, like filming there I don't know. It's, it's like, it's really amazing and kind of weird at the same time. Like, you know, when you're walking down, like the best way to sing, obviously it's, you know, it's to like the, the sound or the, the music track is to just sing it, you know? So right. it's like, I'm walking and I'm really listening to the hoodie buddy and I'm just like singing out loud. Cause I don't want to just like whisper it and be like, can you dance? <laughs> And so, like, you're, like, belting stuff out, and people are just walking by you, and they're like, what the heck is going on right here? Like, there's there's cameras, and this guy's just... Yeah, but it's out. all natural, you know? It's all, like, just... <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. So, I, I really... know, it's like, promo cards. Ah, oh, very nice. I really want a, uh, one of the hoodie buddies. Oh, they are amazing. Um, and I really can't say enough good Those... things about that company. Those are really neat. I mean, why walk around yeah, with just headphones so cool. when it's, like, attached to your hoodie? That's so neat. I know. And they even, uh, they've sent me some stuff, and so I've, I've got a couple hoodies, and they also make, like, T-shirts, and uh, just, like, it's such a cool company. Like, I mean, who came up with the idea to put headphones in, in those things? And it's so weird, too. Like, the first time you see somebody with it, you're like, what the heck is that dude doing with those in his ears? But... You know, whatever. Right, right. And I was going to ask you, um, for dance, um, you co-wrote it with Justin Thorne. How was it writing with him? Uh, actually, Justin and Chris. Oh, and Chris. Okay. And Chris. Um, it was amazing. Uh, pretty much, I don't know if you know this either, but uh, Justin produced that song. Really? So, yeah, if you, did, if you don't know that about Justin, he's, he's an amazing producer, 
and just awesome. Like, you know, besides the dancing and, and the singing and all that stuff that he does, but when he gets in the studio and he's playing crap and just like, his mind is amazing. So, um, it was so cool. You know, we did that in Orlando and just a few days in the studio and had been bouncing ideas off of each other before we even got in there. And he had heard the song. He came over, I played it for him on the piano and was like, Hey, what do you think? Um, so it it was just so incredible and and me writing with those guys like we all just get along so well and and know each other so well that it's just it just feels so easy you know right and he even made a special appearance in your dance part two music video yeah which is yeah nice. and uh, he he was teaching me that dance routine right before we filmed it uh huh because pretty much I called Justin um, and one of these songs on one take we actually wrote together as well. Um, but I, you know, I was out in LA doing this tour stuff and, uh, and playing some residencies out there and I called Justin and I was like, Hey, uh, you want to be in this video that I'm shooting? And he's like, when? And I was like, you want to do it tonight or what? So he was like, yeah, sure. I'm there for you. And, uh, I just told him, I really just want to watch you dance. Like, I don't care what you do. Just go over there and dance. Uh And then he starts dancing and then he's like, hey, uh, you want me to teach you a routine? I'm like, Justin, I don't dance. <laughs> I, sing, like, I play instruments. I can't dance. Uh-huh. And uh, But sure enough, like, he hooked it up. He, he taught me, and, uh, and at least the camera looked kind of like I knew what I was doing. Yeah, by my perspective from watching it, it did look like you knew, like, how to dance for years. So I really liked part um, two. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I've been tapping my feet for years now, so... Uh-huh. Um, but it was so cool, too, of that video shoot, because uh, Justin, I like, I don't even know if they were tourists or what, but all of a sudden there's, like, five or six girls gathered around just watching Justin do his thing, dancing. Like, you know, I'm, they might have been watching me a little bit, but, it, I mean, I was watching Justin, so they, we were probably all watching Justin. Uh-huh. And uh, you, you actually did a little bit of rapping in that song. Tell I us, sure did. Tell us about that. Um, Oh man, you know, when, when we first, that was mainly what we were writing together, um, with Chris and Justin is the bridge part and the rap and just like coming up with that, we're like, yeah, maybe we should rap. And I was like, guys, I mean, I sing pop music. I'm a white guy. I don't know if I can do this. Uh And, uh, you know, we just start like listening to the song and bouncing with it and whatever. And just like, it, it was awesome. You know, and it's cool because it's not like, I wouldn't say I'm a rapper or anything, but it just gives you that element where, you know, you hear some of my music and I want you to always kind of be surprised and be like, mm-hmm. wow, he really just went there and it was pretty cool. So, you know, I always want to keep it fresh and give some somebody something to smile about. Yeah, absolutely. I think it fit well in the song. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Every time I hear it, it catches me by surprise and... And I know it's there, but it's still, I was like, oh, I did that. Uh-huh. That really happened. I like one of your songs, um, I Believe. That one, the melody on that is great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was produced by Justin, too. Really? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice work. Definitely. And um, you actually were in Vegas for a little bit um, at the Mandalay Bay doing a couple shows there. Um, how was right. that experience for you? Oh, man. Vegas was so amazing. Um I was kind of bouncing between Vegas and L.A., mm-hmm. and uh, I play four nights out of the week in Vegas and live at Mandalay Bay. People are like, where, are you, where do you live? And I was like, oh, that's my house, Mandalay Bay. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, they gave me a room at my house, whatever. You can't be greedy. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I play every night in Vegas. Like, what? How can you not like that? Um, and it was during, like, the, uh, the Glee premiere was while I was there when they were doing their live show. Um, and Kevin McHale, one of the guys on Glee was in an LT and he's like best friends with Justin and, you know, we knew each other from that. So I got to hang out with him a bit and just, I don't know, it's, Vegas was amazing. Like it really is almost a wake up call at the same time because most, uh, some of the nights I was singing for a while. And so it's more like you're singing night after night after night after night. And then I'm playing shows in LA on my supposed off nights. Mm -hmm. So like you, that first week after you're done with it, you're just like, I can't really hear myself. (laughs) But you know, like it was, it was crazy, but um, I, I would love to go back and hopefully we'll be going back soon. So. 
Yeah, that would be nice. Are you going to do um, any more, like a tour or anything, any dates around fans can look out for? <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're working on some dates right now. Um, and, you know, we want to get this CD out uh, for the last few months. I've been working on it and then been working on a, uh, a full band acoustic, or full band acoustic, that doesn't even make sense, uh, a full band album that's going to be coming out here pretty soon as well, and then another acoustic album that'll be out. So I've been like just recording so much um, and kind of taking a step back after the tour and uh, shows that I was doing out on the West Coast, and now the music is ready, and we got it, and it's right here, and I'm going to come out, and I'm going to get it out there and uh, play as many places and see as many people and hang out as much as I can. Exciting, exciting. And um, a lot of your songs were on different TV shows like um, Lorraine Gibson's show, Born to Dance. Mm -hmm. um, tell right. us, yeah, what, what was that experience like hearing your song on there? Oh my gosh, it was so amazing. To be honest, it was, it, I don't know if you saw, saw the show, but I was like the very end mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the Born to Dance one. And I knew I was going to be on the show, like, you know. They kind of told me before, um, some of the other shows I'd been on, I never knew until, you know, somebody had written me and was like, hey, I heard your song on The Real World. And I was like, it's not on The Real World. Or like, more in the air. I was like, no way. And then I find out it was. So it was, it's different then. Like, it's such a surprise. And this one, I knew I was going to be on there. So I'm like watching the show. The whole show, I'm like on the edge of my seat. And I'm like, when are they going to play it? When are they going to play it? And then there's like two minutes left of the show, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, I just got punked. They're not playing my song at all. Uh -huh. Why is why are they doing this to me? You know, like, well, who would who would punk Mark Russell? Who is Mark Russell? <laughs> and uh, and then it finally came on. Like, I was so excited. I had it like you know recorded to my whatever, and uh, I, like my parents are watching it. Like, it's just as many people as I could tell about it. So. It's such a cool experience. Well, that's the like the best way to end the finale, right? To have your song on there, yeah, just like I that's know. the last thing people remember too. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I know. And when they when they were playing it, I was like, man, it does fit right there. I was like, that's a good spot for it. Yep, yep. So that's exciting. We hope to hear more was, of your songs on there on different shows. Oh yeah, yeah. It's been it's been pretty awesome. I've had a few different ones up there. So very nice. And hopefully the more will be played. Yeah, we hope so. And um, we hear you have a couple of uh, remarkable items for sale, which I love that name. Do I? Well, this is remarkable right here. Uh -huh. Okay. And it says remarkable. And then it's murdered out. You can't really see it that well. I wish the light was a little better or something. Um, but it says Mark Russell. And oh. it's, it's murdered out. You know, like I wanted to just kind of be there. How did and, you uh, how'd you come up with remarkable though? Like what's look Mark is <laughs> in remarkable? That's yeah. awesome. Um one of my managers, her name's Jessica Andrews. Um, we were just kind of sitting around thinking of merch ideas and uh and as far as the shirt went and all that stuff, and I and I have that too, I can show you. And then we were thinking that how Mark's such a born name, how can we incorporate that into it? And so, you know, she came up with the remarkable, and then we're like, M put your mark on me, or, um, I don't know, marketing or something, you know? And uh, so we came up with the remarkable, and that was the best one we came up out of everything. So, um, and then we just went for it. And it's so cool, like, you know, picking out the colors and whatever. Um, and this is, a, I don't know if it makes me sound horrible, but I literally wear this every day. Um, I no, just love it. It's I, not horrible to say. Not, you're, you're remarkable. Your name is Mark. It just fits. It just, yeah. <laughs> I mean. And then if you haven't, if you haven't heard my music and you see this and you're like, what's remarkable? And I'm like, well, let me tell you uh -huh. about a boy's dream to be, you know, on the big stage for life playing it, music. Yeah. It all and, started uh, when. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, I wanted something like uh, the shirt. Let me show you the shirt. It's black, and uh, it's sick. That's awesome. The design, the design, the design, it kind of wraps around in there, and then you got Mark Russell down there. Ah. And so 
uh, it says all marked up on it. Is like oh what, my gosh. What, what that says. And there's uh, a little story behind this. The uh, the drummer in the band, um, Preston D'Antoni, actually designed it. So there's just like so many cool different aspects when you look at it. You know, you've got like that grand piano chilling right there. Just different stuff. Um, and when we were coming up with a t-shirt idea, uh, I was just like, I don't really care what it says. I just want a cool shirt that when people look at it, whether they know who I am or not, they're just like, I want that shirt because it's cool. You know, you go to like some concerts and it doesn't matter if they're your favorite band or not, but Mm -hmm. you're like, that's an awesome Mm -hmm, mm t-shirt. I want to get that thing. Uh So, you know, that's what I wanted. Um, and after bouncing ideas off of each other and sending back, you know, just like, Hey, what about this design? What about this design? It just came up with such a cool shirt. And like, when you see it on people, it's so cool. Cause you're like, man, that's like kind of on the front side and then it goes to the back and then what's going on right there. I really like it. And you just have to look at it, you know? Yeah. You have some pretty nice merch. Yeah. It, really I do. mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you cool. need to start a clothing line. I oh, I would I would so love to have a clothing line. It'd be well, I kind of do, I guess. Yeah, it, yeah. It's a, well, I, I have a t-shirt line of it's a one line. It's single file right now, but right. we'll get more shirts. Don't worry about that. Uh-huh. Well, I really like how you said all marked up and even remarkable because if someone asks for your autograph, you can just put like all marked up or like remarkable yeah. and sign that as your logo i just think that's so neat exactly i don't think exactly. my name can fit into anything though well <laughs> you gotta just make up something with it and then it'll catch on yeah very nice we'll work on that tell us you started off um in college since you're from orlando from ucf tell us how you mm-hmm. kind of um got started from there into the music industry how'd you start it was it was kind of crazy getting started because uh I, uh, James and I, that's how, how it started. I was with this other guy, James, and, uh, we were playing just kind of local shows and everything. And, uh, we said, Hey, let's do this. Let's, let's go for music. And he said, well, in college, I'm going to be a graphic design guy and I'll work on our recordings and I'll build us a website and I'll get us out there. And I was like, well, all right, I'll be a marketer. So I can actually get us out there and come up with the ideas to get our music out there to the masses and the grassroots and all that stuff. So I was taking a marketing class um, called Entertainment Marketing solely for music. And um, then Jessica Andrews, who's one of my managers right now, she was actually uh, the guest speaker. And it was uh, she was the vice president for Johnny Wright, who's the other manager that I have. So she came in and uh, spoke to this class my class about you know pretty much saying don't do music like you there's only a select percentage like a such a small percentage of people that actually make money in it and um right after the class I went up and I was talking to her and uh, trying to spit some game whatever and uh gave her a cd that James and I had done and James actually came to class with me um my teacher told us like hey walk her to her car whatever you know just push your music on her, and uh, at least get an opinion back at the end of the day. So, um, you know, a couple weeks later, we actually went out and uh, to what Johnny calls his compound, where there's, like, recording studios, and you walk in, and there's, like, NSYNC and Backstreet Boys and Britney Spears and all these other cool bands, plaques that, like, he manages or has managed. Um, And then I was just like, oh, my gosh, uh, this is pretty crazy. So, um you know, it just, it just went from there, like, it, it snowball effect, and then all of a sudden, they're like, hey, do uh, you mind if we manage you? And I'm like, no, I don't mind at all, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind at all, no, no. <laughs> Go yeah, ahead. That's cool, uh-huh. um, sure. And then, you know, it's been so cool, like, being with them, uh, just being able to do the stuff that I've been doing, and, and uh, doing it all on our own right now, which is amazing, because I'm owning everything, so... Lorian Gibson's like, hey, can we put this on a TV show? I don't have to ask a record label. Hey, can we put this on a TV show? I'm just like, yes, put it on the show. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Have uh-huh. fun with that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Very good. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, I kind of like the path that your music is definitely going, just get, being on these shows and everything. It's very impressive. So. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's so incredible. And um, one of the 
the coolest times in, in my career. I was uh, getting in the car and uh, turned on, and then it was one of my songs playing. And a lot of times when I'm recording them, I put them in my car just, you know, to critique them before I send them out and everything like that um, for other people to hear because I want to make sure it's exactly how I want it to be. Mm -hmm. So the song pops on. It's my song, and I'm like, Oh, I'm so tired of Mark Russell right now. I didn't want to listen to him. And uh, so I was like, just turn on the radio. And that was the radio. Wow. And I was like, then I, I just like straight flipped out. It was one of the coolest moments of my life. That's so neat. That is so neat. Yeah. Well, then I, I wanted to, you know, it, yeah. was, it was pretty awesome. That's so cool. And um, we actually know you're a sports fan and you like outdoor activities a lot. Tell us about like I some of your do. favorites. What do you like to do? Well, I don't know if you can see right now, but I kind of got a beard going on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So listen, I love sports. I love playing anything. Mm -hmm. um, and especially like after, uh, you know, getting out of college or whatever, it's like nobody wants to play anything anymore. Um, so I really, I'll jump to get on any team for anything, like playing, uh, I was playing on a men's softball team not too long ago, and, uh, back to the beard though, right? Oh, right. Um, uh, I did this race yesterday, this is why I grew this, because uh -huh. I needed to be more of a man, um, because I did this race called Tough Mudder, okay. and it's 11 and a half miles through mud and obstacles, like huge walls that you have to climb over, and rope climbs and like all this crazy stuff so I was like you know what I don't want to just go out there and just be you know some little skinny white kid that's running his race I was like I need to look like a grown man uh -huh. so I started growing my beard and uh, I was gonna trim it off tonight but my chargers it's like dead so whatever what are you gonna do you know we noticed Justin Bieber in your twit pic on Twitter <laughs> oh gosh yeah <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even hit him, it, you know, it was like, uh, that was at the race, like, that was the, uh, just, like, hanging out after the race, um, and they had this, like, keg toss, and those things are so freaking heavy, Wow. and they threw, Bieber was so far away from me, and uh, it was either throw it at Justin Bieber, or, like, mini me from uh, Austin Powers, oh, and he's, no like, way. just, he's too cool, you know, just chilling there like this, <laughs> so I was like, all right. Gotta throw it at Justin Bieber, but I didn't hit him. Uh -huh. So next time, it was a little. It, my my muscles weren't strong enough to get the keg that far. So next year when I do it again, um, I'll just be in the gym a little more or something. Yeah, look out, Bieber. He's coming. The bork is coming. Yeah. I know. I know. Would you like to do something like a show like Wipeout or something like that? Kind of. I'm trying to think of a show like that. Is that something you want to do? Uh, I would love to do Wipeout. And they do it like cold water and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Which I hate cold water, but the race even yesterday, you jump in this like huge, um, it's like a garbage disposal dumpster, like huge dumpsters that are like metal and massive. And they, they fill it up with just water. And then right before you get there, you see these huge like pallets of ice being dumped into it by these massive forklifts. So they say the water's like 38 degrees. So. If I can handle that, I can handle Wipeout. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That would I'm be neat. That would be so cool to see you on there. Yeah. That would oh, be that really neat. could be a dream come true. Yep, yep. <laughs> and um, you have to tell us now about your Twitter, which is at I am Mark Russell. How do you like using Twitter? Yes. Oh, I love Twitter. It's so cool. Like, just, you know, it's, it's a way to really be in contact with, you know, they call them fans, but they're like my friends. I just tweet them. Uh -huh. Do you they're, they're, what, what do they call them when it's like my, my tweet, tweets or something tweets, like that? Your yeah. uh, tweets, yeah. Uh tweets. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool and it lets, it lets me say, you know, like just saying, hey, this is what I did today. Is that cool or no? You know? And uh, take pictures of me throwing kegs at Justin Bieber yeah, just or whatever. Like... Do you have a favorite tweet that you've tweeted or someone has tweeted to you? I don't know. Um... Do you know what? I gotta tell you one of yours actually. Um, I remember, I don't know how long ago this was, but you were killing a spider. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Do you remember the giant spider you posted? I forgot how long ago that was, but we've been I following did. you for a while, a so. Yeah, I won that battle. Oh, okay. Totally won that battle. 
um, no, there, it, there's just been like so many. I love, um, you know, and especially when I'm like out on the road and it's more exciting than like, hey, I'm just uh, sitting in my house today. Yep. Not a big deal. Um, but, you know, when I'm in the studio and just doing all sorts of fun stuff or even, you know, out playing or uh, throwing stuff at Justin Bieber or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's just so cool. Like, I'm always, when I'm outside and I'm like, hey, uh, could somebody take a picture of me or I'll just take it to myself and be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. So, and then I love, I love like seeing what, you know, everybody else is doing. Like, it's so cool. It is neat. Yeah, mm -hmm. what do you think of life before Twitter in the sense that, like, I don't even remember it because Twitter now, I wouldn't know what you're doing or what anybody's doing, right. you know? I I don't know. I, I think life before Twitter was probably more productive, uh, right? Right, yeah, we weren't just, wasting time tweeting. We were doing actual things, right? Yeah, right. like, we were doing stuff. Now uh -huh. we're, like, doing stuff but taking pictures uh -huh. and then not paying attention to what we're doing because we're like, oh, they're doing that right now? Let's check that <laughs> yeah. out. So, yeah, I think it was more productive, probably. I probably what? got a lot more done for Twitter. You're making some remarkable memories right now well, by, like, tweeting your, photos. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a... Yeah. <laughs> you look back your at language, it. Your language is remarkable right now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, see what I did there? <laughs> I know, I know. Yep, yep. And um, so do you have a website as well people can check out and then your YouTube to check out your music video? Yeah, you can... Uh, the best way to really, really check me out, if you go on officialmarkrussell.com, um, there's like uh, little links to take you to Facebook, to YouTube, to my Twitter. Um, there's also this album, which you can pre-order right now, and uh, it comes out, you know, uh, next Tuesday. Um, and you can, you know, link to the merch store and all that stuff. So, and I post bulletins on there and everything. So it really keeps you up to date, and it's like the best place to check me out, um, and then you can check out all those other places too, like Facebook and you know Twitter and all that stuff. Sounds great. Yes, everybody needs to make sure to check out your EP for sure, and your remarkable merch. Oh, thank you. This interview is remarkable. <laughs>